Our lesson goal for today is we're going to find the greatest common factor. So if we're trying to find factors of 24, factor pairs, we're going to think about two numbers that multiply to give us 24. So you might have said 8 times 3, or maybe 6 times 4, 2 times 12, or actually the easiest one would be 1 times 24. These are the four factor pairs of 24. Think about the factor pairs of 40. And each time I ask you a question, you may want to pause the video so you can get ahead of me. So the factor pairs are, for 40, you could have said 5 times 8, 4 times 10, 2 times 20, or 1 times 40. These are the factor pairs of 40. Now we will list the factor pairs from least to greatest for 24 as well as 40. We have completed writing all the factors of 24 and 40. Now let's find common factors. The list, the two lists have one in common. So one is a factor of 24 and 40 as well as 2 as well as 4 and 8. Now we want to know what is the greatest common factor? In this case, it would be 8. A factor is a divisor that divides the number entirely and leaves no remainder. So when we're dividing, 24 divided by 8 is 3. 3 times 8 is 24. 24 minus 24 is 0, leaving us a remainder of 0. When we take a look at 40 divided by 8, which is 5, 5 times 8, which is 40, 40 minus 40, which is 0. 8 is a divisor and a factor of 40, since the remainder is 0. So when we think of factor, we want to always think of division, divisor. The next goal is to find the least common multiple. So when we write the multiples, when you're looking at your timetables, it's just a list. 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 3 is 12, and so on. We have the three dots, the ellipsis, which means this pattern would continue forever. Till infinity and now we write the multiples of 6. Notice that now we want to find common multiples, which are 12. 24 and 36. Remember, we can never find the greatest common factor since the two list goes on till infinity. But we can find the least common factor. In this case, it would be 12. Okay. Multiples are numbers that we get when we multiply one whole number by another whole number. When we think of multiples, we should think of multiplication. 12 divided by 4 is 3. Another way of writing 12 divided by 4 is like so. When we see a division symbol, this should look familiar to you, and it should look like a fraction. So anytime you see a fraction, it means division. So when we see 12 over 4, this actually is read as 12 divided by 4 as well, which is 3. So again, we have our dividend, which is 12, our divisor, which is 4, and a quotient, which is 3. Another way of looking at it, and the third way of looking at it. This is getting us closer to what we call the distributive property, when multiplying over addition and subtraction is okay. 2 times 2x is 4x. 2 times 3y is plus 6y and 2 times 5 is plus 10. The GCF factoring will reverse this process. We're going to think of what number go into 4, 6, and 10. So we can use our timetables to look for this. And it doesn't matter if we go, we look towards our rows or columns. When we take a look, we can see 4, 6, and 10 on this particular row of 2. Or we can look at the 4, 6, and 10 on this particular column of 2. 
So that means we're going to think about dividing each term by 2. This is the term that we are factoring out. 4 divided by 2 is 2x. 6y divided by 2 is plus 3y. And a plus 10 divided by 2 is a plus 5. Our lesson goal for today will be we're going to find the GCF, the greatest common factor, and the least common multiple. Our essential question is, how does your, knowing your math facts help with finding the GCF and the LCM? Okay, the easy numbers to multiply are usually 0, 1, 10, 9, 2, and 5. Now, certain kids will say 9 is not, but I've added the finger trip for the 9 time tables to this video. So there's a link on this video to see why the 9 time tables are easy to do. This leaves us with 4, 7, 6, 3, and 8. So 3, 4, 6, 7, 8 that are a bit challenging. So the 11 time tables are also easy, but you really only need to know up to your 10 timetable. So since the 10s are easy, as well as the 1s, as well as the 2s, as well as the 5s, it leaves us with L and the 9s. This leaves us with four little pockets of numbers. We also are going to work a lot this year on perfect squares. So notice this pocket and this pocket that the numbers are actually the same. And you see 12 and 12, this line, 42 and 42, 48 and 48, 56 and 56. So that means there's only a few numbers that we have to learn to, and this will actually help us knowing all our timetables. When you multiply two numbers, the result is called the product. The numbers that we are that are the numbers being multiplied are called factors. So when we take a look at this one, four times three is twelve, six times three is eighteen, and so on. These are the ten products that we need to memorize. If we know these 10 products, basically we kind of know all of our multiplication because the other ones are really easy. You should know those already. And then remember this 10 represents actually 20 because we can reverse the process using the community property of multiplication. And we're going to get the same answers. So 8 and 7 are factors of 56. By 56 is the product of 8 and 7. Okay. Sometimes when you are dividing, you may use does McDonald's serve burgers. Okay. So this means we're going to divide, multiply, subtract, then bring down. Nothing can stop you, so just listen to And this link is also, this video link is also added to the bio. Nothing can stop you, so just listen to A divisor is a number that divides one, divides another number either completely or with a remainder. So when we take a look at 25 divided by 4, 4 goes into 25 6 times, 6 times 4 is 24, 25 minus 24 is 1. 4 is a divisor, but not a factor of 25. A factor, however, is a divisor that divides the number entirely and leaves no remainder. The remainder is the portion of the dividend that cannot be completely divided by the divisor. 16 divided by 4 is 4, because 4 times 4 is 16. 16 minus 16 is 0. 4 is a divisor and a factor of 16 since we have no remainder. So when we're dividing, 5 goes into 25 5 times. 5 times 5 is 25, which is 0. If we're trying to figure out how many times does 4 go into 32, if you have a multiplication chart, we just look at the row 4. We go all the way over until we see 32. Or we can look at the column 4 and go all the way down until we have 32. And that means that 
4 goes into 32 8 times. 8 times 4 is 32. 32 minus 32 is 0. 7 goes into 35 5 times. 5 times 7 is 35. 35 minus 35 is 0. I would like you guys to try these next three problems. Remember, pause the video and try them. Our answers are 4, 7, and 8. Prime numbers are numbers greater than 1 that have exactly two factors, one in the number itself. Examples of prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and so on. A fun fact, 2 is the only even prime number. Relatively prime are numbers having no factors, having no common factors uh, other than one. Examples, 4 and 9, 2 and 7, and 10 and 21. Fun fact, two prime numbers will always be relatively prime. The factive pairs of 10 are 2 and 5, 1 and 10. The factive pairs of 21 are 3 and 7, 1 and 21. Notice that they, the only common factor they have is 1. The greatest common factor and least common multiple. The GCF and the LCM. A factor are numbers we multiply to get another number. Examples, 2 and 3 are factors of 6 because 2 times 3 is 6. 3 and 5 are factors of 15 because 3 and 5 are 15. 3 times 5 is equal to 15. The least common multiple, the definition for a multiple, is the product result of one number multiplied by a whole number. Example, 6 is a multiple of 2 because we can multiply 2 times 3 to get 6. 15 is a multiple of 3 because we can multiply 3 times 5 to get 15. 12 is a multiple of 4 because 4 times 3 is 12. Find the LCM and the GCF of 12 and 18. So when we take a look at 12 and 18, we're trying to figure out what number can divide 12 and 18 even. Similar to division, but now we have to think of two numbers, not just one. So when we take a look at this one, we, you might have said two. 12 divided by 2 is 6, 18 divided by 2 is 9. So when we're looking on our multiplication chart, we may be able to see, hey, 12 is right here, as well as 18. That means this is going with this row 2. And we can see that 2 goes into 12, right, 6 times, and 2 goes into not 18, sorry, 9 times. So now what number could go into three? I mean, what number could go into six and nine? And that is three. Six divided by three is two. Nine divided by three is three. So two and three are relatively prime since they have no common factors other than one. Also, two and three are actually prime numbers. Our GCF is two times three, which is six. And our LCM, remember, we always have to and that will give us 3 times 12 or 2 times 18. So remember, when we are multiplying, we always have to start from the bottom and go all the way to the top. We can't use 6 and 18. 6 times 18 will give us a common multiple, but it will not give us the least common multiple. Another way of working out 12 and 18 would be to divide by 3. So we're factoring out a 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. 18 divided by 3 is 6. Now we would say, hey, what number can go into 4? So we remember, we are factoring out, which means we are dividing. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And then we're going to know that 2 and 3, again, are relatively prime. 3 times 2 is our GCF, which is 6. And then 3 times 12, as well as 2 times 18, is 36. 36 is the LCM.
the quickest way would be to factor out the GCF, which is 6. 12 divided by 6 is 2. 18 divided by 6 is 3. GCF is 6. LCM is 36. What number can we factor out of 12 and 16? This would be 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 16 divided by 2 is 8. And now we can factor out a 2 as well. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 3 and 4 are relatively prime. 2 times 2 gives us our GCF of 4. 4 times 12 and 3 times 16 gives us our LCM of 48. Another way would be to factor out a 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 16 divided by 4 is 4. We have our two relatively prime numbers. Our GCF is 4 and our LCM is 48. When we take a look at 2015, again, pause the video so you can try and think, for, uh, think about it beforehand. And in this case, it would be 5, 20. We could factor out a 5, 20 divided by 5 is 4, 15 divided by 5 is 3. Our, GC, our two relatively prime numbers, and 5 is our GCF, and 60 is our LCM. When we take a look at 24 and 18, we can factor out a 6. 24 divided by 6 is 4, 18 divided by 6 is 3. We have our two relatively prime numbers, our GCF of 6 and our LCM of 72. Remember, 4 times 18 is 72, as well as 3 times 24. If you were thinking of using 3 or 2, you are correct. This will just take multiple steps instead of just one step. And our last one, and this one is the one that most kids have trouble with. The greatest common factor, what can we factor out of 11 and 16? And that would just be 1. 11 divided by 1 is 11. 16 divided by 1 is 16. This means that the two numbers we began with were relatively prime. So now we can, we know our GCF is 1 and our LCM is 176.